Blessings, beloved. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Only Jesus. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through him. He is love, he is perfection. He is Jesus. All things that are worth having come from him. All good things. Amen. Sorry. So, Romans 10 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. So put your faith in him today. Don't wait. Be a soldier. Why does the word of God say, whatever state or whatever you were doing when you came to the Lord Jesus, continue doing that? Why do you think that is? Because the Lord has placed you where he wants you. You're on track. And to start changing maybe your career or too much or, you know, excuse me, starting something else would be, you know, a distraction. When you should be focusing on your walk, on your ministry or whatever you, your role is in the body of Christ. So... We've come to realize that we are nothing but what Jesus says we are. We are only what he says we are because he's Lord. You say, well, I don't agree with that. Well, you can disagree with it. That's your free will, but that's futility. You can choose to believe something that is a lie. You can choose to believe something that's not true. But why would you do that? To do that is to choose death. We don't want you to choose death. We want you to choose life. Because life is love. And there's no potential for love and death. And we want to love you. We want to love you. That's it. Just to love on you. For you to have good gifts. Forever. But most importantly to know the Lord because when you come to realize that Jesus is your breath he's your breath think about it you see the enemy it's like this the Bible says love thy enemy why because we were we were once enemies of the Lord's kingdom. Now it may not have been deliberate, like calculated, you know, saying I'm gonna set myself up against the Lord God. But that's what it was. You were actually warring against his kingdom in your deeds and actions, thoughts, deeds and actions, thoughts and deeds. Suffice. So in your thoughts and deeds, you were warring against God's kingdom in other words you are doing things that don't lead to peace and God's kingdom is the kingdom of peace therefore you are an enemy of the kingdom of God even though you may have not been aware fully of that that's different isn't it if you weren't aware that you were an enemy of somebody because of what you were doing and that person is complete love of course they're going to overlook that like if you had a child and that child was doing something and they didn't know they were doing wrong doing it. Like, for example, they get a big dirty crayon in their hand. <laughs> it's all over the wall and you come home. What are you going to do? Start reasoning with the child who can't yet speak? And we're kind of like that in a way. We're, we're still small children before the Lord. We have an adequate understanding or at least a built-in capacity to understand but when a child is holding the big 
crayon and scribbling all over the wall with it. And they think they did the right job. And then you come home and you see the big crayon <laughs> marks all over the wall. What are you going to do? Slap the child? Or chastise them? Like, you know, with great vehemence? No. You're going to say, oh, you can't do that. Because that's the wall. Here, I'll show you where you're supposed to do that. Now, don't do that again. Now, if the child gets a kind of a... one of those and says, this is going to wind mommy up, that's a different kettle of fish. And then keeps doing it to get a reaction. It might also be a symptom, but this is a little bit of a digression, that the child wants your attention and you're not giving them enough of it. And they realised that this gets mommy's attention. But that's humanity. The Lord is separate and above and holy and complete and perfect. So he has given you enough attention. He knows every hair on your head. Now he's not in your immediate environment, but he's in you. He is your breath. When I say he's not in your immediate environment, I mean him personally. His transfigured self standing in front of you. That's what I mean. Like you can't, you're not face to face with him yet. But... If you look around the world, you can see his works. You know you're in his house. Right? Just like you know you're in Mammy's house when you took the crayon to scribble on the wall. So you're, you're not with an excuse because you, unlike the little child, had an understanding of right and wrong. Whereas the little child mightn't have known I shouldn't draw on the, the wall. I just had, I remember an experience myself where I walked across the poster. I was only small and I walked across a poster that people were after spending <laughs> some of the day doing. And I walked across it and I wasn't maliciously or vindictively or trying to cause a problem or undo anybody's hard work. I just didn't rec recognize that it, that it was something I shouldn't walk on. I recall this clearly. And I remember getting chastised for doing that. So that chastisement was out of place. And I recall that in myself that that was an inappropriate chastisement because they didn't get to the bottom of whether I meant it or not first. But the Lord knows the heart. He knows whether you meant it maliciously or, or not. And he chooses who he will grant repentance to and he knows on what basis he has done that. I'm not going to attempt to play the role of the Lord but I'm just showing you that the Lord will take all factors into account. You understand? So as parents, we get this angle, this point of reference. And so a parent has a different, slightly different and more informed view on the world than one who is not a parent. Because they've, they've begun to see more angles of interpretation. And they're trying, and it causes you to think what the child might be thinking. And you'll do so if you care about the child's little thought process, just like your own little thought process. So if you think, if you care what's going on in the child's mind and heart, you're gonna to want to get to the bottom. Why did you do that? And then they might open up and start, you know, talking to you about why they did that. You said, no, you can't, you can't do that. You have to you have to put the crayon on the paper. That's not a big deal, a bit of crayon on the wall. Probably wash off. You have to put the crayon on the paper. You might even get a bit of a, a laugh out of it. But you might even take a picture of it nowadays. Some of some scribbles passes art nowadays. The point I'm making to you is that. You have to think about the child and where they're coming from and the Lord God does. Now, the child wasn't deliberately the enemy of the paint job the first time. Unless they were a bigger child taking the crayon off the smaller child and 
let's do this and leading another child astray and that's what goes on in the world the bible calls them wolves they're leading one child who's in ignorance away and showing them what to do how to be an enemy of the kingdom and they're trying to build it into the smaller ignorant child ignorance just means lack of knowledge there's no negative connotation into the little child how to draw how to be an, an enemy of the kingdom of God not good very bad this is a different completely different thing so my point to you is this if you are a sheep of God the likelihood is you haven't done this But the Lord God is willing, because somebody might fall into witchcraft because of the peer group they were in. They might end up in there. Just like somebody falls into a group that are doing drugs and ends up on drugs. Or da -da -da -da. But the Lord knows the heart. He said, my sheep hear my voice. So how would we be effective shepherds if we started to prejudge somebody because they're doing drugs? Or da -da -da. Well, we were in those things. I used to smoke marijuana, a lot of it, a lot of it. I used to smoke it like somebody would smoke cigarettes. Sometimes like in the fields on my own for hours, staring at the ground. Talk about arrested development. Just smoking marijuana. <laughs> My parents hadn't a clue. Because I was an intelligent young child, I was able to hide it to, to a, a great extent. Now, I don't know to what extent they knew what was going on because we never really had that conversation, but that's another thing. That was my own decision to do that. I take responsibility for that. So, but at the same time, I didn't know the full knock-on negative effects that marijuana can have on a life or on a person. I liked how it felt. I liked the escapism. Um, the warm, fuzzy feeling it gave me. And, you know, when you'd be sitting around with other lads and you'd all be in the warm, fuzzy feeling together and... You know, you'd be chatting with them and laughing with them and eating bags of crisps with them and joking about things and sometimes just staring at, you know, the ground for an hour and then, oh, how long are we here? Oh, I've got to go. Because you wouldn't be with it. And so you learned to enjoy those types of things, but ultimately it's harmful. And that's the nature of sin, is that it has immediate um, enjoyable things. I don't, want to, I don't want to go around the houses here, but I'm making a point. It has an immediate, enjoyable thing. And this is the bait. Like promiscuity, like sleeping with a woman. Oh, I slept with her, but... I, and you can tell yourself a story. Try and excuse yourself. And make up a God in your own mind who's okay with your sin. So you can go sleep at night. And, and, and I did that based on what the world was telling me you know well if I was thinking trying to rationalize if I sleep with a woman and she she doesn't um, expect a relationship from me then then uh, I can sleep with her tell her beforehand I don't want a relationship I want to let you know beforehand I don't want a relationship that's horrible I'm realizing now how evil that is that's like saying I'm telling you now I just want to use your body that doesn't diminish or reduce the fact that you're using her body that's just telling her up front It doesn't really differ much, you understand what I'm saying? 
the act is the same. That's horrible. She's a person with a heart and a soul and a mind. I'm just going to use your body. Oh, it's just casual. They call it other things. Don't call it using your body for sex and, and, and gratification and flee. And the point I was going to make was that it gives you an immediate sense of satisfaction, pleasure, the physical. I had I struggled with that because the pers kind of person I am, it takes me a time to feel, to, to let down my guard with a, with a woman. And until I do so, I wasn't able to even perform sexually. I would struggle. And I didn't know that about myself until I was in a longer relationship, which I've only ever had one of. So there you are thinking, oh, I'm struggling to, to perform sexually. Then, you know, that's opportunity for, for the demonic realm to come along and make you feel insecure because they don't want you to have faith and that would play right into their hands. When actually there's nothing wrong with you physically, everything's working. But because you're not actually spending time with this person and growing into them, so to speak, you're not able to perform sexually with them because you know something's wrong. You know you're not doing something right. But you see what happens is the person learns to overcome that. And that's evil. That's a defilement of the organism. So it's no longer how the Lord God meant it. It's simply the act of sex. It's like a dog humping the leg of a chair. It's, it's a bit more than that, but I'm trying to make the point that it's a dog humping the leg of a chair in the sense that it's just the physical act. It's just an urge they're fulfilling. That devalues and diminishes the worth of a person, a person, a human being, an image bearer of God. Who was I to go? To, who was I to tell a woman? You can only uh, have my body, physical body. And I want to make use of yours in the same aptitude, but it doesn't work that way. You could say, yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem, but that's not how it works. The woman might go away and she might be the type of person who immediately makes a bond. So you are going in there doing harm to yourself and her. Because the Bible says that man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. You don't leave that place the same way you went into it. You don't. You became one body with that lady. She has a part of you. And she, go, she walks away with it. That makes me angry. Women shouldn't be treated like that. And men shouldn't be treated like that in the way they're brought up to think that that's right to do. And then the little baby that comes about as a result is butchered. In an abortuary, an abortion clinic, in a butcher's. And mommy and daddy might pay for it. Or the state. Or the state of that. And this is okay to people today? Dress the human form up like a piece of fruit. That'll draw the eye. Tell them they can do whatever they want. It's their body. And then when it comes to actually reproducing after their own self, we'll just kill the baby. Because we'll tell them that they can. And we'll have built it into the brain of their parents that they should pay for it. And that they should have the interests of their child and not the child of their child. That's the divisive weapons of Satan. You see? 
So the point is you think you're doing something good, but you're not aware fully of the full damage of what you're doing. The child isn't aware when they're drawing on the wall, scribbling with the crayon, I'm destroying the paintwork here. Mommy and Daddy care about the appearance of this. The owner of the house cares about the appearance. This is disordered and scribbly. And so they get you they get you a chalkboard or a whiteboard or one that crayon can work on that's cleanable, washable, and you can reuse in that little space and it's organized and ordered. Instead of people walking into Crayolaville, they walk into an ordered place. It's true. Women are not your plaything, men. Time to grow up. The measure of a man is not what he can bench press. Do you understand? So who can reinstate you once you've gone away from the Lord in this way? Only a parent who cares. Does that have to be your biological parent? A father who cares, small f. Does that have to be your biological father? No. Society needs many guides, but they should be guides who care. Why does society need many guides? Because there will be many there willing to lead society into the ground and off the rails. So if you have more of them, you're likely to find good counsel along the way. And they can pipe up and say, no, 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 that's wrong because. And then you can make your decision based on what you heard. What do they want to do? Shut you down if you're, what you're saying is adverse to their narrative and agenda. And that, sh that, explo that ex exposes them. Because they, they're saying we're all about liberty, tree of liberty, pike man, fought for our rights. And then when you're actually out in the public place speaking your viewpoints and opinions, if it is adverse to theirs or it exposes theirs, oh, shut that man down, put him in jail. That's what we want to communicate to the people, that if you have a different opinion to ours, yes, you can have your opinions and beliefs, but they must be the same as ours or you're going to jail and we'll civilly do it. They totally avoid the, the fundamentals of, of law that have been uh, long since enshrined in our constitution. They're just totally ignoring them. Presumption of innocence. Jurisdiction. Policemen in, in civil courts. P prosecuting somebody when the person has the right to be presumed as innocent. Here they are representing somebody else against you in a civil jurisdiction where they have none themselves. They have no jurisdiction in the civil court. So this is unlawful. This is hideous ochlocracy. A mob entering into our state, trying to take over the, at the, the only thing they're lacking is flames and pitchforks. That's all they're lacking. They're still effectively removing your rights. Oh no, it's still there in the Constitution, black and white. Yeah, that's all it is. If I can't use it, it's just black and white on paper. I've got a problem with that. Why? Because it tries to divide my ability to be a guide to my fellow man. And I don't accept that in Jesus' name. Who are they to tell me that I, as a 38-year-old man, can't attempt to reach out to my fellow man and say, lads, this is not right. Because, and, re and reason with them. Using the word of God, which is enshrined in our constitution, the very word of God as the, as the point of reference, as the source of the points I'm making, and they want to shut it down. To the point where even a, gar a member of Angarda Shiakana used a verse from the Holy Scriptures as evidence against me to justify sending me to prison for a month. I mean, this is just 
a mockery of um, organised society. Yet the bin man shows up on time in the morning. So they see the value of order, but they don't implement it in all, all across the board. Nor do they actually promote their um, purported, professed um, beliefs. So they don't care. I mean, they have plaques in the ground, stone plaques and trees of liberty and pike men standing there. We fought for your rights. And they take a picture with it. Yay, it's a, you know, a candid camera moment and something to take home from your trip to Wexford. But at the end of the day, what value has it to fight for your rights when you don't implement the rights you fought for? What value has it to sing the ballads in the pub when you're drunk and know all the words to it and fail to know the words to your constitution? These are like men who know that they shouldn't draw on the wall with crayons but are drawn on the walls with crayons and blaming somebody else for doing it. They're saying, you yeah, know, I agree that you should not draw on the wall. Then they draw on the wall and blame somebody else. Scapegoat, pass the book. You should have your rights. We know that, yes, that there should be order in society. You should have your rights. But not you. And we're going to keep you till the end of, of the day when there's nobody in the court. We're going to try and railroad you and roughshod over you and just throw you in prison and treat you poorly and take away your rights and, and, and ban you from speaking publicly and not really give any evident, irrefutable evidence as to why. But at the same time, we're going to pretend as though we have some kind of moral high ground that we're actually abiding by the law. When section 115, 117 and section 7 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act is absolutely anti-constitutional and anti-law. The fundamentals of law are disregarded by these three legislations and therefore they are unconstitutional and must be deleted if they are to uh, maintain the integrity of the Irish Constitution. Otherwise, they have been exposed as deliberately dismantling it in their actions, by their actions. So as people of Ireland, as people with the ability to think and reason, it would be absolutely neglectful and a departure from all that is ordered, all that has been enshrined and valued in the Irish nation and others in the Western world for thousands of years, excuse me, thousands of years, to allow legislations to undermine and reduce and remove your rights effectively without removing them from the Constitution by superimposing legislations that purport and profess to afford um, the judges and juries and police the ability to operate out of jurisdiction and outside of the law. These are pirates, effectively. They have set up like a scaffolding around the Irish Constitution so that they could tear it down. You've got to set up a scaffolding to get to the roof to tear, start tearing it down brick by brick by brick by brick until there's nothing left of it. And that's what these amendments and legislations do. They need people in ignorance. So they set the scaffolding up overnight and people aren't watching. And they keep people busy doing other things while they set up this scaffolding. Bit by bit by bit the scaffolding goes up. People get used to that scaffolding. That bit of scaffolding was there. A week passes, another bit, another layer of the scaffolding. A week passes, another layer. People get used to it gradually, seeing it as they go about their daily business. And these amendments, if you go to the Irish Constitution, you'll see these amendments have been built in over the years gradually. And actually, an amendment 
cannot be unconstitutional in its makeup or anti-constitutional in its makeup or anti-foundational in its makeup otherwise it actually is treason so when you actually go through the amendments that are in the Irish Constitution you'll see that treason has been committed time after time after time high treason high treason high treason and they've come against the Irish Constitution on a number of occasions and they have relied upon the ignorance of the people or the compliance of the people through witches covens and etc etc and secret societies which the Irish Constitution um, says is un an unlawful thing you cannot be a member of Angarda Shikana and a member of a secret society so the Irish Constitution itself acknowledges the existence of secret societies so if you think it's just the utterings of a paranoid man you haven't read your Irish Constitution our forefathers knew with hindsight, foresight and insight that secret societies existed and they knew that we needed defending against them. So it's built into our constitution that you cannot be a member of Ungarda Shukana and a member of a secret society so it must have been a problem then and imagine how much worse of a problem it is now. It's being that those people who put the Irish constitution together are dead. And that's what Satan relies upon, that's what the enemies of the state rely upon that's what the enemies of good order and good morality rely upon they rely upon the death of those who were informed and they try to keep the next generation ignorant or in agreement with them recruit or remove do you see so legislations state is not a participant the provision for a state of emergency to secure the public safety and preservation of the state in time of war or armed rebellion Interesting. so if you actually go through these amendments they're not just amendments they're removals of the effectiveness of the Irish Constitution at its foundational or fundamental level it's like taking bricks out of the foundation and expecting the building to stand so what do they do they take the bricks out of the foundation and they build up their exoskeletal, uh, like scaffolding structures, and they make them strong enough to hold up the building or to give the appearance that the building is still standing, but it's not. It no longer has an effective foundation. There's one actually in town, there was one in town there, an old building, and it had these side beams, metal side beams, propping it up because it no longer had the integrity to hold itself up. That's what these things are, they're props. To prop up the Irish Constitution, but they actually remove the, found, the, effect, the effectiveness of the foundation of it. Do you see? So these amendments are actually treason. And they were brought, they were, people were hoodwinked and um, in their ignorance, fooled into believing that these things could be actually brought for referendum they, they couldn't be and therefore they don't actually exist they rely upon your compliance because if something is anti-constitutional or unconstitutional actually anti-constitutional is a better word because it's directly opposed to the constitution so to be anti-constitutional not just unconstitutional because you might say well that happened by accident that's not the case these are anti-constitutional amendments. They're directly opposed. They are a spearhead pointed at the Constitution to keep it ineffective, nullify its movements and mobility, its effective use. So there they are, holding their spears at the Irish Constitution to, to depict an image. Say, you stay where you are, you're not moving. And anybody who tries to stand up for the Irish Constitution, they point also swords at them. So there we are. Put him in jail. Quiet him. Civil ban. Civil order. And oh, antisocial behaviour. Prove that? No. Antisocial. Can you prove it? Where's the irrefutable evidence? Can you prove that, please? No. Don't need to. What do you mean? What kind of a question is that? Do you see what I'm saying? So this is, these are their kind of tactics. Are you actually asking that question? Emoting. They emote whenever they have nothing to say. Is he really asking me that? See, they're trying to recruit 
by emoting, by evoking a response in you, they're trying to rally support. Do you see how they operate and work? They're evil. So they'll always try to pass the book. Me? I didn't do it. Johnny did it. Johnny? No, I didn't do it. Philip did it. Huh? 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 Who did it? Right? Do you see what I'm saying? So they keep passing the book to somebody else. I didn't do it. Uh, guard it. But they can't avoid doing this. And it being exposed when you bring it into a court because everything's recorded. So that's where they have to address, according to the Constitution, with somebody who's trained up in law and therefore they're held accountable. They want to avoid this. Kick this down the road, stretch it out. I've just been told that um, only now, it's now February, that my hearing on the 15th of February has been kicked down the road indefinitely. I wasn't given a date. Now that speaks for itself. All of this time has passed and they want to tell me only 10 days or so before the hearing that it's been kicked down the road. I mean, what do I look like? Give them as little notice as possible and then be as vague as possible. 10 days notice and they haven't told me when the hearing is uh, uh, postponed till. Why? That's useless. Vagueness. Hearing? What hearing? It doesn't actually, I haven't been informed that it has a date even. They're running. They are running. Running and hiding. That's what they're doing. Because they can't win. They've scribbled all over the wall. And they cannot avoid it. Because the scribble is on the wall. They can't pass the book on this one. Because the scribble is on the wall. And the wall stays where it is. And all you have to do is point at it. So what are they doing? I don't want to go and look at the wall. Um, the day we were going to look at the wall. Um, let's not look at the wall. Um, and they tell you, give you as little notice as possible, as I said. And they don't give you a definite date where you're actually going to go and look at the wall. Which would be the hearing in the High Court. Where you actually compare what they've done against the constitution in a higher court where they'll be held accountable there's the high court the supreme court the right court of appeal there there are these positions and points where you get an expert on the law in to assess what they've done assess the legislations do they fit the Irish constitution and there's it's an unavoidable thing what would you do? Kick the thing down the, the road and kill the guy? Well, I'm still here. Are they going to try and do away with me? Will I go missing all of a sudden? Hmm? That would expose them, wouldn't it? Do you see? Disappear him. How are they going to do that without fallout? You see, whatever the Lord Jesus purposes, no man can stop. And if the Lord Jesus wants the word of God to reach his sheep, they cannot stop it. Our job as servants of God is to tear down their strongholds whenever they try to build them up there. And it takes them so long to build up their strongholds that they're so unwilling to let anything take them down that they will do anything to try and stop it so long as they've been permitted to do it. Because what the Lord has, Jesus has purposed, they can't undo. So it's the Lord God who allows something to happen or not. Because remember this, 
God institutes all powers on the earth. And I want to bring you to the Irish Constitution to show you that. How he is referenced in the Irish Constitution. I mean, what the, what the Irish have done here, I mean, this is a complete mockery of the pikeman, of the tree of liberty, of the Irish Constitution. It's a complete mockery of being Irish, what they are now doing. It should anger you as an Irish person. As any person who values order in society, it should anger you. The Bible says, be angry but sin not. So I'm going to go to the, um, the Irish Constitution. Bunrock Naharan says, in the name of the most holy trinity, that's God himself, in the name of the most holy trinity from whom is all authority and to whom the Irish Constitution is bowing down to God Almighty as the highest authority. So how can a Garda Shia, member of Angarda Shiakana ever use verses from the Irish, or sorry, from the Holy Scriptures recognised by the Irish government as our point of reference for good morality and order as evidence against a preacher to see him in prison for a month without abandoning his role? This is reckless unconstitutional, unchristian, it's anti-Christian um, behavior. Evil stuff. There are all sorts of stuff, calling, singing, speaking, and oh, it's, it's a ridiculous situation altogether that needs to be addressed, and now they're running from it. In the name of the Most Holy Trinity, and so the Lord God Almighty's glory is seen, and they can't avoid it. And his mighty sword is seen, and they can't avoid it. And the fact that he is the most high authority in the earth is seen, and they can't avoid it. And we can reference it in the Irish Constitution, I'm about to, to do that. In the name of the Most Holy Trinity, from whom is all authority, and to whom, as our final end, all actions, both of men and states, must be referred. The Bible says, the enemy shall come against you, but he shall flee in seven, seven ways from you. As our final end, all actions, both of men and states, must be referred. We, the people of Era, that's this country, the name of this state, humbly acknowledging all our obligations to our divine Lord Jesus Christ our divine Lord Jesus Christ we the people of era the collective of era humbly acknowledging all our obligations to our divine Lord Jesus Christ and they want to put me in prison for singing a hymn containing the name Jesus for a month in a strip cell the first night we the people of era humbly acknowledging our all our obligations to our divine Lord Jesus Christ who sustained our fathers our ancestors through centuries of trial praise his name gratefully remembering with gratitude, remembering their heroic and unremitting struggle, speaking about the men, to regain the rightful independence of our nation. That's what the Pike statue is about. That's what the Pike Man statue is about, guys. They want to take pictures beside it and then behave like that. And seeking to promote the common good with due observance of prudence, justice, and charity, so that the dignity and freedom of the individual, Jesus' glory, may be assured. Individual. Do you understand that society is made up of individuals? And that we should all be afforded the same rights, or none of us are, effectively? 
Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not a nation if we're not all afforded the same rights on the same basis and held to the same standards. And seeking to promote the common good with due observance of prudence, justice and charity so that the dignity and freedom of the individual may be assured true social order, attain true social order. Now they're making up this fake sort of thing on a wing and a on a whim I should say um, in terms of sections 115 section 117 and section 7 of the criminal justice public order act say you know using uh, you know subjectivity as a measure for what anti-social behavior is whereas anti-social behavior is clearly definable but hasn't been in those legislations but has been in other parts of the constitution and don't fit in to where they have placed these um, amendments or sections of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act. Because the Criminal Justice Public Order Act 1994 was brought in through the Intoxicating Liquor Act. So that really it's there to police drunks and how they behave to and from events and, and after pubs and in certain hours. Like it's even seen based upon the hours that these were supposed to come into effect like between 12 and the early hours of the morning. So they're deliberately targeting people around nightclub time hours drunks coming out of places that's what that was all about and now they're trying to slide those things over to apply them to a preacher during daylight hours without any evidence without any video evidence they could have taken videos no problem they could have had videos not a one video that they produce not one piece of solid irrefutable evidence have they produced this is ridiculous I have a YouTube channel full of videos that they can refer to and not one of them was produced. You can download videos from YouTube. Anybody can do it. You just use fbdown.net. You copy the link of the video, you copy and paste it into the search or to the download in the website and you can download any video and it can be used as evidence because it's public evidence. It's, pub it's, it's made open to the public. Now, they could have done this, and they didn't do this, and they haven't produced any video evidence uh, for the open court either, because the evidence, if it's on video, shouldn't be just shown to one person, it should be shown to everybody present in the court, or it hasn't been shown. Do you understand? So them just saying, here, judge, here, look, have a look at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not really playing properly. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Him and hawing over the video isn't properly producing solid, irrefutable evidence. Making sure the court is empty while you do this because everybody's gone home because you've kept this person or this uh, hearing till last is obviously a deliberate attempt to try to reduce the effect it has or the impact it has or um, how many people it reaches. So clearly their movements and steps from, from day one have been uh, underhanded, to say the least. And unlawful, basically un unlawful. Fundamentally unlawful. Amen. So let's expose it. In the name of the most holy trinity from whom is all authority and to whom as our fine land all actions both of men and states must be referred we the people of era humbly acknowledging all our obligations to our divine lord jesus christ who sustained our fathers through centuries of trial gratefully remembering their heroic and unremitting struggle to regain the rightful independence of our nation and seeking to promote the common good with due observance of prudence justice and charity so that the dignity and freedom of the individual may be assured, true social order attained, the unity of our country restored, and concord established with other nations. Do hereby adopt and act and give to ourselves this constitution. This is the foundation of the Irish constitution, to recognise Jesus as the source of life and the source of law. And it acknowledges that the Bible says that all powers are instituted on the earth by God Almighty in the name of the Most Holy Trinity from whom is all authority. Now, they haven't obeyed the law. Whoever was the legislator 
who legislated for Section 7, Section 115, Section 113, I think it is, Section one, yeah, sorry, 113 and 115, not 117. Section 113 and 115 and Section 7 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act have not actually, whoever legislated th these amendments, have not actually had the interests of the Irish people and their rights in mind and haven't actually complied with the law in composing these legislations. They have had a nefarious agenda in, in composing these and that is seen by how they try to implement them. It's exposed by how they try to implement them. Now the mar Crayola markings are on the wall. That's why they're running. I only received an email. I can read it out to you here. And I will. From my council. I'll tell you what it says. Just a moment. And I'll show you. Okay, so as you've seen in this video, really what the behaviour of this, the courts and Ungarda Siakana have been, and whoever legislated, have been um, unconstitutional at least and treasonous at best. Okay, so I want to amend what I said in this video. Stephen, further update, your case will now proceed as planned next week. So the case is actually, uh, will actually proceed. So that's my error, I just hadn't looked at my, my emails. So previously I was informed, I'll show you now. It said, Hi Stephen, Council does not have your submissions finalised yet and is not in a position to proceed on the 15th. We will have to vacate the date and get a new date. And then that was that was changed, just as I read out to you. Yeah, so it says, further update, your case will now proceed as planned next week. You know, What we have to do as Christians is we have to show that it's interesting because that just that email just came to my attention now as I'm speaking to you. So what we must do is be prepared for these evils in society and that's what the, the Irish Constitution is about. They want to run from these things, and they have been. Putting it on last in the day and making sure everybody's gone out of the court and not showing the evidence to everybody in the court. And da -da -da. Like they, they want, the guard actually said, I saw Mr. Tallon standing on the bollard through a CCTV footage, through the CCTV footage, and he was holding a sign now, is the guard saying that he could actually read what was on the sign through the CCTV camera? And that he, he just so happened to see this in from the station and was alarmed that it could cause some kind of breach of the peace? I mean, that, that doesn't sound realistic at all. A man standing on, on a little bollard holding a little bit of cardboard 
can cause a breach of the peace? Nothing obscene on the cardboard. Only scriptural verses and things uh, founded in scripture. So each statement was um, reduced to fit on the cardboard, but the verse it comes from in the Holy Scriptures was cited on the sign. So that if anybody wanted to uh, check, check up what was being said, on, written on the sign, and, and compare it to Holy Scriptures, they could. None of that was done in, in court. They didn't attempt once to actually check in the Holy Scriptures if what was written on the sign was in line. They didn't attempt to do that at all. Why? Because they're not theologians. And even if they did disagree or make the point that what's written on your sign doesn't correlate with what's in the Holy Scriptures, they still wouldn't be able to stop me holding a sign with that written on it. According to the Irish Constitution. You're allowed to hold a sign in the public square saying anything, so long as it's not obscenity. And obscenity is clearly defined in law. Obscenity is inappropriate nudeness, inappropriate nakedness, inappropriate actions, uh, overly graphic material, and things of that nature. It's clearly defined. Nothing on the sign was obscene. Therefore, why would it be removed? And why would somebody, why would a member of Angarda Shiakana assume that it might cause a breach of the peace in the absence of anybody complaining? When he himself said that he wasn't uh, uh, going to affect a breach of the peace. So obviously a guard isn't going to be the one who's affecting a breach of the peace based on what's written on the sign, unless he's trying to remove somebody's rights inappropriately based upon what's written on the sign, which he did, therefore he was the one breaching the peace. So now we have the, the ones who are supposed to be keeping the law, breaking it. We have the ones who are supposed to be keeping the peace, breaching the peace, and accusing the ones they're arresting as being the ones breaching the peace. So they've turned the whole thing on its head. But we rebuke that in Jesus' name. Because Jesus is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Because Jesus is the power and the authority that institutes all authorities in the earth. He's above and, uh, and beyond all authorities on the earth. He transcends the Irish Constitution and gives it any reason for existing. Every word written on it depends upon him for, un, for um, to make sense. You rely upon him to be able to read the Irish Constitution. He is the giver of all intellect all faculty all ability so knowing this surely the running has to stop and we have to address these things you know this thing has been postponed more times than i have fingers on one hand kicking it down the road 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 for one thing or another and they were about to kick it down the road again and for some reason they've decided not to. How many times do they think they can keep this thing down the road before they have to address the crayon on the wall? They've made errors. Excuse me. And they should address them. Shouldn't they? All things proper. So, I don't mean to seem incensed, but I am angry, and I should be, and so should you, with a righteous indignation, not a malicious anger, with ill intent for anybody. I do not have an ill intent for anybody. I love all people. I, I, I respect the Gardaí, I respect what they do 90% of the time, and but this is this is this is a step too far. They're they're trying to undermine the Irish Constitution, right? Nobody's perfect. We're all striving to. But this is a deliberate. I mean, a Garda giving evidence in a court. Scriptures from the Irish from the Holy Bible as evidence against a preacher. 
I mean, this is just a mockery. Talk about chance in your arm. Blessings, beloved. Romans 10.9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Blessings. <laughs>